Welcome to the Raw Coding YouTube channel. My name is Anton and today we're going to be talking about role-based authorization. If you're working with ASP.NET Core, chances are you're going to be using Identity Framework, MVC, Entity Framework, and you might be using role-based authorization. Now, in my authorization video, I do talk about role-based authorization, although I just skim over. I say role-based authorization is just claims and policies. So in this video, we're going to specifically dive in on role-based authorization and take a look at how it's implemented, where it's triggered, and what are the pieces that it's composed of. Before I begin the video, I want to let you know that I have a course out, the C-Sharp programming course, where I teach programming through C-Sharp. So if you want to know programming as I know it, I highly recommend you go ahead and check it out. The course is meant to be evolving over time. So if you get the lifetime purchase, you get all the present and future content that I'm going to be adding to that course. The course is currently aimed at beginner level. However, there will be more advanced stuff added on later. Thank you for listening to my advert. If you did, let's go ahead and get started. So we have the roles project and the roles project contains two controllers. In program CS, all we're adding is authentication and just regular cookie authentication, authorization, controllers. And by the way, if we take a look at that controllers at controller score, under the hood, it is going to try to add authorization, even if you haven't actually added authentication or anything like that, right? So with controllers, this authorization is pretty much already registered. I then have map controllers and use authentication and use authorization for my middleware. Closing this on the home controller, we have two routes, the index route and the secret route where I'm asking for the role of admin. On the account controller where we have the login endpoint, all I'm doing is manually signing in under the cookie authentication schema with this claims identity that only has one claim of the name identifier. So with this claims principle, no roles in sight. If you watch my authorization videos, you're going to know that if we go into program CS, add authorization, authorization middleware, you're going to be able to scroll down here and come to this point where the policy is being loaded up. You can see here I have a breakpoint because this is the main point where role based authorization is actually loaded. So again, if you're a beginner, as the request is coming in, it's going through this middleware. And at this point, we're trying to apply role based authorization, even though that we haven't added any policy or anything like that. Okay, I have the application running. Let's go ahead over here. We are currently in the at the index route. And if I just go to secret, and I get a 404 here, the reason is because I'm not authorized, I just get redirected. If I go ahead and attach a debugger to my roles process. And by the way, if you're using something like VS Code or Visual Studio, I don't know if this is possible to decompile the code, place a breakpoint in there and then actually see the debugger stop there. So this is one of the main reasons I would recommend to actually use writer because I decompiled the code, I placed a breakpoint there. And now if I hit secret, and I'll see our application stop here. Now what happened before this doesn't really matter policy currently is null, we're trying to get a new one. We have however, some authorization data. And the authorization data is coming from the endpoint. The endpoint, hopefully you can see here is home controller dot secret. The endpoint originally is fetched from the context and the context is the HTTP context. So if you didn't know, you have information about which endpoint is being invoked on the HTTP context. And this is applied after the use routing middleware. That's the middleware which figures out which endpoint is going to be called. Nevertheless, we know what endpoint we're calling, we know what authorization data we want for that endpoint, we can see that we're asking for a role of admin. And some interesting things happen inside this combine async middleware. If I step in, and I will scroll down to this if statement over here, where we're going to reach because we haven't registered any of our authorization policies, and the authorization datum or data will have the roles which are going to be split by comma. So the roles split over here, whatever endpoint that we were calling over here, it requires an admin role. The interesting thing here is that it will create a new policy builder. So it's creating a policy on the fly, and it will call the require role method on the policy builder, 
which will add the role authorization requirement, okay, which is also the authorization handler. In the handle requirement async, this is the bit which is actually trying to figure out if the current user is allowed to access the resource or not. The real piece of logic which is going to be executed here is on the requirement we're going to check which roles are allowed on this endpoint and then we're going to call the isInRole function on the user which, well, it's a little bit hard to see here but it's going to be the claims principle, okay? If we back out and we take a look at isInRole we're going to see that it is just a for loop iterating over the identities inside the claims principle and it's taking a look at the individual role claim type on the identity and compares it to the role, which is going to be one of the allowed roles, okay? And again, if we take a look at is in role, it is calling the has claim. So this is how role-based authentication is really built up out of policies and claims. We're just checking whatever role claim is configured on the current identity and then a policy is being built up on the fly to essentially invoke this logic, okay? And this is how we are essentially flying past this and we are ending up on the 404 because we're not allowed. Now that we have this information, when we're gonna go to the account controller and let me close everything else. When we're looking at this piece of code, we now know we need two things. A claim which is going to represent a role and just to kind of push the issue forward that we really understand this, I can say that I am going to represent my role claim extravaganza, right? This can be named whatever you'd like it to be, right? And then the role that we're looking for is going to be admin. The second thing that we need is that role claim type, which is going to look for this specific claim. This should be accessible on the claims identity, although we don't have it here. The real way that you set it is if we open up the roles identity, we scroll down, we're gonna see various constructors where you can actually supply the name type and the role type. If you're wondering about the name type, it is very similar to role type, but name type is actually going to populate the name of the claims principle rather than look for the role. So back to the accounts controller, to the claims identity, we're going to say that name type, for now it's going to be null. And the main thing that we're inter interested in is role type, which we're saying these claim types are going to be representing the role concept in ASP.NET Core. With that running, and my debugger should detach, or maybe not, uh, let's go ahead, close it down. This is going to restart. We're going to come back. We are going to log in. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to make sure that I have my cookie over here. I'm now going to go to secret and we will be able to reach the secret route. Coming back to the code, let's summarize role-based authorization. It's built out of claims, which are basically key value pairs. And the key is meant to say that this is a role. And then what value do you hold? The role type is really just a pointer that you're looking for these keys and these are going to be the representatives of the roles. Now, if we go into program CS, we know now that inside use authorization middleware, there is logic that basically says there is some authorization data on the endpoint. It doesn't have a configured policy. Are there any specified roles? If there are, go ahead and start building up a new policy. And then it adds the role authorization requirement to it which is going to use the role claim type to check if the user contains the claim. One question you may have, is it building this policy all the time? No, it is only going to build it once and is going to cache it. So if we go back into the authorization middleware and it will help if I will close this down, let's scroll to right over here. We will see that this policy is going to be constructed. And then as long as it's not null, we're going to store it in the cache. Next time around when it's going to enter the middleware, the policy is going to be retrieved from this cache, okay? And that's all you need to know. Now with the account controller over here, we've done the construction of the claims principle manually. Let's go ahead and see how identity framework is going to do it. We're gonna come over to the roles identity, which is pretty much a copy, though I set up identity framework with the default identity DB context to store the users. And I'm not even connected to a database, I actually want to say that I'm going to use the in-memory database and call it MyDB. I will then also need to seed the user, so I will get a 
services over here, create a scope and surface my user manager. Now that we have the user manager, I can go ahead and create an actual user, give the user some simple information and a password of, well, password. I will need to await on this. Once we have a user, I can use the user manager to add the user to a role or to multiple roles. So here, let's take the user, take him out, not take him out as in, you know, with a gun and shoot him, but rather into its own variable. We'll await on this result and we will add to the admin role. I'll delete this new line and for the seeding logic, this is about as much as you need. If we take the user manager, we'll go to the controllers, we'll go to the account controllers. Now that you have the user in the database, I'm not gonna be supplying all the credentials over here. I will grab the sign in manager. It is still going to be for the identity user. And the sign in manager is going to do some very, very similar work. Let's actually give this a body. I think it will be a little bit easier to read. We'll take the sign in manager and we will sign in async or where is it? Password sign in async where we supply the username and the password. The username for us was test.com and the password is password. We also then have some options, which eh, I would say don't really matter at this point. We will await and then return OK. The main thing we want to understand here is what does identity framework do similar to how we do it in the account controller over here? Because we're constructing a claims principle and then we're adding it behind this cookie authentication. In the account controller over here, if we go inside password async, and we're going to see that it's using the user manager to find the user by name. Once we have the user, we're going to go into password sign in async. And here, again, for some reason, we're just verifying that the user is not null. And then we check password sign in async. So we try to check it. We go inside, we have some kind of check that might error out. And then again, we use the user manager to communicate with the database to check if the password is correct, which is just going to use entity framework core under the hood. So let's head on out of here. At this point, the password should be correct. All it should do in the end is just return that sign out is successful. We're going to now back out a couple of times. I know this may look a little bit confusing, but check password sign in async. This should return an attempt. If the attempt is successful, we're gonna call sign in or two factor async. In here, we don't have two factor authentication enabled, so we bypass it and go a little bit further. This bit here is for external authentication, which you just actually want to clean up. But after that, you enter one of these two methods. If you don't have a login provider or if you have one, a login provider is an external login provider. So if you're trying to externally authenticate authenticate with Google, you're going to enter into this bottom part. So I'll sign in with claim async, we have the user that is persistent and the new claim. Let's go ahead and dive a little bit deeper, a bunch of more stuff in here, let's dive even more deeper. And here is the method of interest create user principal async. Let's go ahead and dive into there. We have a claims factory with create async. Let's go ahead and keep going down into this method. Then here we have generate claims async, which returns a claim of identity. So we want to go ahead and dive a little bit further. In the generate claims async method, we are extracting user ID and username from the database. I'm not sure whose idea was it to make this service so chatty with the database. But here we have our claims identity identity application where username claim type and role claim type is being placed into the claims identity. And you will see that options claims identity, you can actually configure this stuff from the options. So this is identity options. So you can see where these options are going to be used. If you come back to program CS and you go over here, when you hover over this O, this is that identity options. So O claims identity, you can actually configure what you want your role claim to look like. So whenever you're adding a claim, so add claim, and this is going to be some kind of claim of a role admin, something like this, and you want to change the default Microsoft claims, you can actually do that. But hopefully, uh, with all this stuff, it paints a clearer picture of how role based authorization works, and how it's all assembled in ASP.NET Core and identity and MVC. Let's go ahead, and run this application and see it work. So dot watch. Looks like a role admin doesn't exist. And that is because I actually forgot that there is actually a role manager that you need to be using. And this is going to be, I think, identity role. So a role manager where you want to go ahead and create a role, which is going to be a new identity role. And the name will be admin. 
semicolon the end. Let's wait on this. Go over here. Should be restarted. So try to reach secret. We get redirected to login, which we don't have. We go to login. I have not changed the route on here. So this is actually going to be account slash login. So account slash login. We will be authenticated successfully. So if we take a look at this, you can see that this identity cookie is going to be representing this identity framework authentication session. If I go to secret now, I will be able to reach the secret route. And this is pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. And you can clearly see how role-based authorization is built out of claims and policies. And if you're wondering about the usage, it is a pre-configured solution, which means it's not as flexible because policies and claims are your smaller building blocks. You have more flexibility, but you're going to need to write a little bit more code with roles, less flexibility, but less boilerplate code. Again, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to check out the authentication playlist. If you would like the source code for this video and my other videos, please come support me on my Patreon. I will greatly appreciate it. Very, very big thank you to all of my current Patreon supporters. Your help is greatly appreciated. If you're still listening and you're a beginner in C Sharp, go ahead and check out my course. I think you will enjoy it a lot. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you later.